Have you guys three seven. What was that? Because I thought. In theory, be here. There's a power for good in the universe, greater than you are, and you can use it. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning service. We are so glad you have chosen to join us on this day, January 30th, 1954. <laughs> Won't you all rise, please stand up, and join us in singing from our virtual hymn book, number 56, New Age Vision. to see the coming of an age that is to be when from every limitation shall the son of man be free for the age is rich in promise and my soul has eyes to see God's truth is marching on be seated. Welcome to the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science on this day, January 30th. What did we say, 1954? Yes. Whether you are joining us in person or you are on Zoom or Facebook Live, we are so blessed that you have decided to come be here with us. So right now, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and pray in and set an intention for this day, shall we? So we just together turn within, recognizing that there is one infinite loving presence and power. It is that which is both source and substance, which created and sustains this entire universe, and it is that which surrounds and fills each and every one of us. And I know that it has brought us here today. It has brought us here today together to celebrate as that divine oneness, that divine dance, that beautiful, perfect, loving expression of infinite life. And I declare, and I intend for all of us today, that there is a sense of receptivity, there is a sense of availability, that we are open and receptive to know that there is indeed a power for good in the universe, greater than each and every one of us, and we choose to use it, and we choose to let it use us. So I speak my word today knowing that Dr. Mark is on fire fire with the inspiration from heaven, with the inspiration from heart, with the inspiration from love, from joy, that truth, that kingdom within, and that his message, his communication, and all the communication this day is absolutely felt, received, and lifts each of us up. I bless the music knowing that it it inspires us, it opens our hearts, it opens the very cells of our body. And everyone who is here responds, corresponds, and we are that blessing in the world. I am grateful to know this. I am grateful beyond words, beyond measure. Ah. So I release this word into law, knowing it is so. Together we say, amen. Thank you. And now let's sing hymn number 14, Abide With Me. of God, blessed to my 
that same consciousness, if you have not yet silenced your cell phones, would you do so now? And then would you stand and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and leave us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. And if you would remain standing for our congregational song, we have a surprise song there for us. Sam, can you tell us about that? You're right, Cindy, we do. Our congregational song today, everybody, will be led by none other than Ernest and Hazel Holmes, good friend and licensed practitioner. Would you welcome, please, the great white lady herself, Miss Peggy Lee. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Peggy. Would you please be seated? And now, friends, I'd like to take this moment to ask you to join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, author of the Science of Mind textbook, dean and founder of Science of Mind, my teacher 
and my dear, dear friend, the one and only Dr. Ernest Holmes. <laughs> Dr. Holmes. <laughs> Dr. Holmes, would you please lead us today in our meditation practice? Of course, my dear. Let us now join together in a simple five-minute spiritual practice of meditation. Say with me now, silently, as we prepare to enter the sacred silence. There is one life. There is only one life. That life is God. This life is perfect, and this life is my life now. Again. There is only one life. This life is God. This life is perfect, and this life is my life now. Once more. There is only one life. That life is God. This life is perfect, and this life is my life now. And so we'll remain in the silence for five minutes.
We're so grateful you're able to join us today for my 135th birthday party. <laughs> oh, Dr. Holmes, you know I would not miss this for the world. And in all the years I've known you, you've always taught me to speak the truth. The truth is that any day I get to spend time with you, it's a good day. Yes, it's a good day for singing a song, and it's a good day for moving along. It's a good day. How could anything be wrong? A good day from morning till night. Yes, it's a good day for shining your shoes And it's a good day for losing your blues Everything to gain and nothing to lose A good day from morning till night I said to the sun, good morning sun Rise and shine today You know you gotta get going if you're gonna make a showing Paying your bills and it's a good day for curing your ills. So take a deep breath and throw away the pills, cause it's a good day from morning till night. Good morning, sun. Rise and shine today. You know you gotta get going if you're gonna make a showing. And you got the right away. Cause it's a good day for paying your bills. And it's a good day for curing your ills. So take a deep breath and throw away the pills. Cause it's a good day from morning till night. Yes, it's a good day from morning to night. A good day from morning to night. A good day from morning to night. No. Oh. Well. Not every Sunday you get to have Miss Peggy Lee in church with you, is it, huh? Wonderful. So, Dr. Holmes, we are so glad that you could join us from the other side of the veil today. Uh, I'm Dr. Mark Vieira, and I'm the senior minister here for the past 31 years. In fact, uh, thank you. Uh, I believe that uh, you've even attended our church a few times. Uh, as their dean and founder of religious science, would you please, uh, or uh, will you be, uh, you will be, what am I trying to say here? You will be pleased to know <laughs> that this powerful teaching is still being taught around the world. Uh, would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Uh, not at all. That'd be fine, Dr. Mark. But first, I must ask you a question. I recognize that ring you're wearing. How did you happen to come upon it? <laughs> um, well, uh, in 1990, I graduated from the cemetery, seminary. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Sinclair. <laughs> and um, I had uh, done a treatment. I had done a prayer because my parents were coming from the East Coast, and they had never heard me uh, speak religious science. And so I prayed uh, for an opportunity to speak somewhere while my parents were visiting the West Coast. And a wonderful man, uh, Reverend Donald Ray Henderson in Santa Ana, asked me to speak at his church there. And uh, so my parents came, and I did the talk. And after the service, um, an elderly man, Joe, his name was Joe, asked if he could see me. And I said, sure. And I thought, oh, here comes feedback about the talk. And, um, and so I thought, shut up and be humble. Just listen to what the man has to say. And so we went into the office, and he said, um, 
all during your talk, I had this feeling that I'm supposed to give this to you. I had no idea what he was talking about. And he said, but here, and well, no, well, oh, here, just take it. This belonged to Ernest Holmes, and now you're supposed to have it. So, um, and he got the ring. This man, Joe, got the ring from Dr. Holmes' last student, Dr. Bob Scott, who incidentally was the founder of our church here in North Hollywood. Wow. So the ring belonged to Ernest. He gave it to Dr. Bob Scott, who gave it to this guy, Joe, who gave it to me, and now I have it. <laughs> Thank you. It is my size, by the way. <laughs> so. It's perfect that it belongs to you now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, in fact, um, you know, the Buddha on this little table also belonged to you and your beloved wife, Hazel. Um, so can you tell us why you, Dr. Holmes, were so drawn to Buddha? Yes. The Buddha was the first to practice the science of mind. Yeah. Okay, this makes a lot of sense because the Buddha offered spiritual practices, right? And understanding in order to transcend suffering. And so this teaching of ours offers freedom from thinking that we are here to be in pain or to suffer. Yes, I do not believe that God has imposed suffering upon anyone to punish them or to teach them a lesson. To me, this is ignorance. So I consider religious science a thing of destiny, or I wouldn't be here. You know, I've given my life to it. I've never made a living out of it because it doesn't interest me in that way. I think it is a thing of destiny. Mm. I believe that the evolutionary process, periodically in history, pushes something forward. Forward as a new emergence to meet a new demand. And what is that new demand? There is a new spiritual impulsion in the world. It has certain objectives in the world, has certain purposes, to teach and to practice, and nothing else. Teach and practice, practice and teach. That is all we have. That is all we are good for. That is all we ever ought to do. I am convinced our movement is a thing of destiny. Dr. Holmes, you've written that we are to bear witness to a spiritual truth which has come down to us from the ages. You have written that the science of mind is a synthesis of all the great thoughts, Plato, Moses, Jesus, Buddha, Emerson, Socrates, Plotinus. Yet with all of that, you've often said that there is only one thing that we teach. Yes, that's right. That's right. It, it's very simple. God is all there is. There isn't anything else. There never was and there never will be. I believe that when all the psychological condemnation is done away with in the world, hell will have cooled off and the devil will be out of business. <laughs> <laughs> we, are not, we are not hung up on a cross. We have a song to sing. We have joy to bring to the world and love and peace and happiness. Well, since you brought it up, Dr. Holmes, why do we even discuss crucifixion or the cross? Because of this. The cross stands for the tree of life, whose roots are in the earth, whose arms or branches are stretched out in a protective manner, and whose head or top piece is pointed toward the sky. This really represents the threefold nature of humankind, spiritual, mental, and physical. Or, as the Bible says, spirit, soul, and body. And so, Jesus permitted that which was human about him to hang on this tree of life and to be taken down and placed in a tomb, which stands for everything that means an obstruction to life, everything that looks as though life were buried, inactive, and dead. Let us not forget that even in this experience of the tomb, it was filled with a light. The light that the Bible says lightens every person's pathway. The eternal light of heaven. And it was this light, this life, that Jesus took into the tomb with him. It was the light that emerged from the tomb. The cross and the suffering and the anguish in the tomb were but preliminary incidents to the resurrection, to the triumph of the Spirit. And the certainty that the cross cannot long crucify, nor the tomb long contain that which is destined to live forever. Wow. Dr. Holmes, you... 
You have given us a form of prayer called affirmative prayer or spiritual mind treatment. I have personally seen many, many people have some powerful healings or demonstrations, as you call them. Can you explain why treatment works, and can you explain it in a way that isn't complicated or hard to understand? Yes, yes. Uh, the best way for me to explain it is for you and your con uh, congregation to simply experience it. So silently say to yourselves, there is one, there is but the one perfect eternal life, and this life is my life. Perfect health is now established in me and in my mind. Perfect health is the law of my being, and it is my conscious experience from now on. I know that the law accepts my word and delivers to me the conscious manifestation of health, and I thank the great spirit of life for this fulfillment. That's it. Seems pretty clear. <laughs> it's exactly that. Simple, clear, and direct. As you meditate in this manner, you are directing mind and setting divine, divine law into motion. Your demonstration will take place to the same degree that you believe it will occur. Be still and know. Know that your need is answered before you call, just as surely as the light will shine on your face whenever you turn your face to the light. When someone new comes into our churches, they sometimes have a hard time believing that they are worthy and loved. A lot of people come here <clears throat> who grew up believing that they were sinners or that God would test them to see if they're fit to enter the kingdom of heaven. What do you think of that, Dr. Holmes? Well, first, let us understand that the kingdom of heaven is that place within ourselves where there is universal and individual peace at all times peace that holds no doubt of our abiding good and wise divine protection. To enter with, we must simply recognize that this kingdom exists and exactly where Jesus taught us to seek it within ourselves. Mm -hmm. We cannot deeply contemplate such a place without taking on all the blessed attributes of its divinity and becoming peace itself. Are we, are we tested to see if we are fit to enter this kingdom of heaven? No. However, having mental freedom, we may choose to test ourselves sometimes and find ourselves wanting. That is, we may find a lack in our own understanding. But God, Spirit, never tests us to see if we are fit for anything. Spirit knows nothing of tests. Spirit knows exactly what we are, which is nothing less than individualized centers of itself. Spirit knows only perfect love, perfect being. Perfect being is peace, the kingdom of heaven, when we can contact that place within our consciousness. We are in the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, Dr. Holmes, I understand that your mother had a lot to do with your conviction that God is all there is and that the universe is governed by a loving spiritual law uh, that doesn't want to control us but actually wants to fulfill us. That's absolutely right. It is the nature of the divine or God to give of himself fully and completely. There is much to be received, but there is also much to be surrendered. What do you mean surrendered? That sounds like God wants us to sacrifice and struggle. Ralph Waldo Emerson would have said that our surrender means that we must take our bloated nothingness out of the path of the divine circuits. <laughs> we must be willing to surrender our egocentric opinions of ourselves, and we must surrender our limiting opinions of ourselves. Our bloated nothingness and our erroneous beliefs are taking up the space that the gifts of God are trying to occupy. If we want God's good in our lives, we must make room for it first. Oh, Dr. Holmes. Mm. Yeah. Dr. Holmes, you've had a reputation for being someone who loved to enjoy the beauty and humor of life, and you loved having people around you. I understand that at one point, some even accused you of hamming it up. Your response to them was wonderful. Would you share it? 
Well, I, uh, <clears throat> I told that gentleman that everyone has by nature a little ham in him. Hmm? <laughs> little show off, likes to perform. I like to ham it up myself. <laughs> What's more, I love appreciation for the effort I put forth. Hmm? <laughs> I've always thought that a little taffy before shuffling off is much better than a lot of epitaphy after one goes on to the new experience. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, I put it this way. I love its giddy gurgle. I love its fluid flow. I love to wind my tomac, tongue up. I love to hear it go. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Do you have any more of those? Oh, I've got a million of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, <clears throat> some people have asked me if I get funnier or more entertaining when I drink. <laughs> I don't like to drink a glass of wine now and then maybe. And I think that there are other ways of getting uh, lit up besides drinking liquor. Why should I addle this little brain I have with all that stuff? Hmm? <laughs> uh, speaking of that, religious science has been popular with many people in recovery. Uh, we have always had a connection with AA and a lot of other 12-step groups. Um, is it true that you knew Bill W., the man who wrote the big book, and basically launched generations of people into lives free from being enslaved by alcohol, drugs, and addictions. Yes, yes. Bill was a very wise and spiritual man. Oh. Uh, Dr. Holmes, it seems like our world right now is in a lot of turmoil and fear. So, um, you know, so many people have been searching for something, and yet they're afraid that if they do find something of value, someone else will try and take it away from them. Furthermore, when all of the nations of the world see God incarnated in each other, they will no longer have use for swords. Yes. We teach and we know that there is an instinctive divine urge within everyone to know more, to be more, and to express more. And I have found that the thing we are searching for is the thing we are searching with. Jesus tells us that the real treasures of life are eternal. They belong to the kingdom of God within us. These treasures cannot be corrupted. They do not corrode. Thieves cannot break through and steal them. It is this sense that no one gives to us but ourselves. And no one takes from us but ourselves. Do you ever worry that this teaching of God within might create a lot of people who have big inflated egos? <laughs> if your big inflated ego is showing and you think you're something special, you stick your finger in a pail of water, pull it out and see how big a hole it leaves. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Well, that's good. I, I'm not sure I do. <laughs> <laughs> you might have heard that uh, for the past two years we've been dealing with a worldwide pandemic. A lot of people are feeling very sad and depressed right now. What kind of advice would you offer about that, Dr. Holmes? Let the one who is sad or depressed find some purpose into which he may pour his entire being, and he will find a new inflow of life, one of which he or she has never dreamed. The Almighty has implanted genius within each one of us, within the soul of everyone, but God speaks only to the ear that listens. I feel like all of us have been blessed today by listening to you, Dr. Holmes. Do you have any words that you would like to leave us with? Jesus said, it is done unto you as you believe. We can be certain that there is an intelligence in the universe to which we may come that will guide us and inspire us a love which overshadows. God is real to the one who believes in the Supreme Spirit, real to the soul that senses its unity with the whole. If we are to have an active faith, the faith of God instead of merely a faith in God, our thought must be centered in universal mind. No matter what the outside appearance, we must cling steadfastly to the knowledge that God is good and God is all underneath, above, and roundabout. Thus we shall be able to say with conviction, I know in whom I have believed. This brings us back to where we started, prayer, meditation, spiritual practice. 
Before you leave, Dr. Holmes, would you please be kind enough to lead us in a prayer? Thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like us to do the closing prayer together. I'll start. <laughs> I accept the fullness of my own divine well-being. Within myself is that which is perfect, that which is complete, that which is divine, that which was never born and cannot die, that which lives, which is God, the eternal reality. Within myself is peace, poise, power, wholeness, and happiness. All the power that there is, and all the presence that there is, and all the life that there is, is God, the living Spirit Almighty. And this divine and living Spirit is within me. It is wholeness. It is always in a state of perfect equilibrium. This is the truth about myself. There is no other self. My mind now entertains and reflects this divine wholeness into every organ, every function, every action, every reaction of my physical being, renewing it after the perfect pattern, the Christ within me. There is something within me which goes before me and prepares the way whenever I go, wherever I go, making straight the way, making perfect the way, making immediate and instant and permanent and harmonious every situation. Peace, poise, power, perfection. Living spirit within me is me, myself. Mm. I accept the fullness of my own divine well-being. So continuing in this consciousness established by our very own beloved Dr. Ernest Holmes, I know that we are surrounded and we are filled with God's infinite spirit, a spirit of love and peace and intelligence abundance, wholeness, that that spirit of God that's everywhere and within us is the most true, most real thing about each and every one of us. We are emanations of the Most High God. And in this awareness of our oneness with spirit, I know that we are also connected with each other on the unseen side of life. <clears throat> that in the mind and heart of God, there is only one. And it's all of us together. We're it. So in this awareness, I speak the word for us that we are healed and whole today. That any belief in separation that we have held, we surrender that now to be replaced with a deeper faith, knowing that God, that life is absolutely for us. That there is nothing working against us. That each and every moment of our spiritual journey, we are loved, we are provided for, our needs are met. We are healed and whole, we are safe, all is well in our world. And as I know this for myself, I claim it for all of those that we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye and we know that right where they are, the fullness, the allness of infinite loving spirit is revealing itself in perfect ways. And so we let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. Wherever there is discord or the appearance of a lack of harmony, we now claim peace and unity and oneness. Wherever there is a need for healing, we know that need is met right now. Even before the word is spoken, God is on the job. And so we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. Because the truth is, we are all one. We are all connected in that divine mind and divine heart. And so it is with an open, gracious, full heart that I say thank you, God, for this and every blessing that fills our lives. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and 
set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. So, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart as we say our statement of affirmative giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Thou hast for me, and in my soul that wonderful key that opens the door to set me free. Joyously now I am with thee, letting thy light illumine me. My mind open now I see. Maybe do something that's a little more churchy. <laughs> oh, please. Oh. oh, yes, yes. Oh, of course, of course, Dr. Mark. I'm so used to singing in supper clubs. I, I don't know what came over me. Maybe it's the glasses. <laughs> okay. Boys, let's try number one in my songbook. A little more uplifting, a little more churchy. Is that all there is? Is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friend, then let's keep dancing. Let's break out the booze and have church music. Something for church, for our congregation to hear. Please, you, you must have something. All right, let's, let's take a deep breath, Dr. Mark. <laughs> okay, boys. I like the East. I like the West. The North and South, they're both the best. But I'll only go there as a guest. Cause I love being here with you. I love the sea, I love the shore, I love the rocks, and what is more, with you there they'd never be a bar, cause I love being here with you, singing in the shower, laughing by the hour, life is such a breezy game, love all kinds of weather, long as we're together, I love the way you say my name. I like good wine and fine cuisine and candlelight. I like the scene. So, folks, if you know what I mean, I love being here with you. I love being here with you. Now, I like a talk. Dr. Mark, he never bites, he only barks. No question that he's got that spark. I love being here with you. And Ernest Holmes, oh, do that day. Science of mind takes me away. Ain't it wonderful? He's here with us, too. 
I love this place. <laughs> so I have to tell you, I want to thank Karen Mitchell as Miss Peggy Lee. Karen, come on up. C come up so we can see you. Thank you so much for being here. You are a goddess. You can get her music at KarenMitchell.com. MitchellMusic.com. Okay, so stay here for a second. And I also want to thank Dr. Ernest Holmes, a.k.a. Mark Kroll. You can't, you cannot get his music at Karen Mitchell's. Anyway. More importantly, i got to tell you, guys, band, would you stand up? Randy Landis, Sinclair Lutt, Karen, and my husband, Charlie, sitting in over there. And Sam Krieger. Give it up, give it up, give it up. I have a few announcements. I promise not too many. As this is the first time at your church, <laughs> you had no idea what we did here, did you? I hope you'll come back. We have fun. Uh, and we are glad that you're here. So stop by the, um, we have a, a table outside and you can get more information. We call it the welcome table, oddly enough. So I hope that you will stop by, get a packet and learn more about us. And join us, by the way, for coffee and birthday cake on the patio immediately following the service. So now there are a lot of ways that you can make donations and you can participate in the ongoing consciousness and supply and the flow of this church. If you go to our website, nhcrs.org, you will find out that you can do everything from call in a donation to text to tithe to send a check, put it on your credit card. We make it so easy for you to stay in the flow of infinite abundance. And won't you help us do the same? So prayer with the practitioner is available right after this service in the room. And if you are watching in our virtual universe, you're on Facebook, pop over to Zoom. You can do it there. And if you're on Zoom, then stay there, join the, the patio, and you will be matched up with the practitioner, and you will get some prayer. Wednesday evening with Reverend Sydney Steen. I hear she's pretty good. It, uh, this week, so we are, I am starting a whole series on the season for nonviolence, and this week's topic is Be the Change. So you can join us here at 6.50 for meditation, 7 o'clock for the service, also on Zoom and Facebook Live. Youth Church is now open on Sundays, 9.45. 
We welcome youth of all ages. We have a quick start class that we've been doing that qualifies you for membership in this beloved community. And this is the last time that we are meeting today with Dr. Mark, and that's from 12 to 1.30 on Zoom only. Um, foundational class with Dr. Mark starts Tuesday, February 15th, on Zoom only. So you won't even have to fight the traffic. But I tell you, this is what got me launched on my path towards all that I get to do. And for so many others, you want to expand your life and see it do all of that wonderful stuff that Ernie told us about? Join Foundations. It's 14 weeks. It is life-changing. And you will understand what we teach, how to pray, and how to just absolutely lift up your life. You can sign up on our website. So we want everyone, please, to join us in consciousness to know that on Sunday, March 6th, we will, in health, in safety, and in love, return to two services on Sundays. We will continue to do Zoom and Facebook Live, but it's so much juicier in the building, isn't it? Um, and we will have our junior church at 9.45 service only. Um, we have a Zoom virtual patio before and after all of our services. There's a Zoom meditation that happens every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 o'clock. You can go to our website and get the links for that and so much else. You can sign up for our e-blasts and our newsletters. Um, is there anything else I want to say today after the service? We're going to have cake. Let's stand and sing happy birthday to Ernest Holmes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Ernest. Happy birthday to you. And I also want to thank Dr. Mark for allowing us to go crazy today. <laughs> and if you'd remain standing, we're going to go ahead and sing the peace song and then have cake. One, two, three. Three. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.